And in next week's Key Cutter Masterclass, a look at the enigmatic world of Yale. But now on TV Go Home, the fascinating televisual experiment, Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Before arriving on the island, maths teacher Duncan Holdall was concerned the others wouldn't fully accept him because of his sexual orientation. My hope, my real hope, is that it won't be an issue, that we'll build a society where what a consenting adult does in the privacy of their own bedroom is as irrelevant as what colour their hair is or how many legs they've got. But five months into the project, a problem develops. At first, everything was fine, but now... There are, there are things that are starting to bother me, people's attitudes. It's making me sick. I'm, I'm going to have to say something. Any other business? Yes, um, I'd, I'd like to say a few words. And I'm sorry if this upsets anyone, but um, I have to get this off my chest. Frankly, I find a lot of your attitudes disgusting. I'd like to think after all the time we've shared together, we could all be friends, but there are some people here whose opinions I find objectionable. When I came to the island, I told you all that I was gay, and not one of you has looked down on me. Not one. There hasn't even been any poster jokes. And the longer I've had to think about this, the more it has upset me. I mean, I'm a fairy. That's not normal, is it? It's not what nature intended, so it's wrong. It's obvious, isn't it? Why can't you see that? Oh, Duncan, I think you've got the wrong impression. I mean, I think I can speak for the whole group when I say that secretly we all despise homosexuality. Yeah, Duncan, if it's any consolation, I'd come to see you more and more as an affront to God's earth. Thanks. Thanks, Puffin. Thanks, Jean. That means a lot. It really does. I appreciate it, but... They're just words. How do I know you really mean it? How do I know you just won't learn to accept me? Look, Duncan, you're a valuable member of this community, but it doesn't mean we'll ever really stomach your repulsive tendencies, and I hope this convinces you. Oh! Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bussington. Thanks. I just hope you all can, can find it in your heart to try and to drum, drum this wicked illness from my twisted mind. It was just a lovely moment for the community. I think we all needed to reinforce the bonds within the group, and Duncan's gayness did just that. And he seems a lot happier in himself, especially now he's started his treatment. We've had a talk and it's been decided that what I need is therapy, so I have to stay in here with this hammer. And from now on, whenever I have a homosexual thought, I must tap it out of my head, sort of, uh, sort of a bit like this. <laughs> only, only harder. Evacuate your brain cells and make room for the latest showbiz news in Scorch. Hello, you're watching Scorch, the showbiz show that's showbiz full. Later on, we'll be taking an exclusive look at the latest games machine to come from Japan. But first, this week's entertainment headlines. The voice of an angel, Charlotte Church, visited a zoo last week and laughed at a penguin. It's the second time Charlotte's been amused by an animal. In 1996, she smirked at an owl in a chewing gum commercial. Catherine Zeta-Jones is set to carve a canoe out of Disprin and sail it to Ireland. British film star Mark Jeffries has signed up for the lead role in forthcoming romantic comedy Stuck on You. Jeffries plays a man with a magnetic heart who falls for a girl with a in pelvis. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. I mean, it's a very exciting role. I'm, in fact, I'm actually uh, tickling my little balls right now. Come on, oh, have a look. Oh, go on, have a look at that. Tickling my little balls, I'm so excited. <laughs> 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 it's just crazy.
crazy, isn't he, that Mark Jeffries? I interviewed him once, actually, on the set of Sodden Swabs, yeah. and he started attacking our, our sound guy with a staple gun. <laughs> Bonkers. <laughs> Absolutely not, and a really funny guy. Yeah. Now, if I say the word video games, you probably picture a man made of pixels killing a horse with a brick. Well, with the launch of the new Despot Wowbox console, horse murder will be more realistic than ever. Here's Duncan Noose with his report. Video games, love them or hate them, there's no denying they've come a long way since 1926. The earliest video games were played on blackboards. Using chalk and a duster, players could enjoy a painstakingly slow game of tennis. Today's games, of course, are far more sophisticated, and so are the people who play them. Can I ask what you do for a living? I'm the president of ICI. Little wonder, then, that the launch of a new games console is big news. And this is it, the Despot Wowbox. Builds the most advanced system yet. Let me tell you, it truly is amazing, with graphics that are out of this world. This is the first game available for the system. The Tinkle Stick Challenge, in which players have to urinate in a teacup in order to impress a Chinaman hiding in the ceiling. Its creation took nine years and cost well over 18 billion pounds. With me is games journalist Gideon Hallway. Gideon, is the Wowbox all it's cracked up to be? Oh, yeah. I mean, as you can see, the graphics are amazing. Yes, they are. They really are amazing. It has got amazing graphics. Graphically, I'm amazed. Amazing. Graphics. But it's not just graphics, it's also got a 300 uh, gigahertz node assessment chip. The graphics both. really are amazing, aren't they? It has got amazing graphics. And with graphics like that, there's no denying gaming's here to stay. Well, I've got my pound coin, so I reckon it's time for a little bit of virtual fun. So until next time, this is Duncan News reporting for Scorch. Duncan always gets the tough assignments, doesn't he? I mean, MTV party last week, yeah. Games Arcade this week. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're working him too hard. <laughs> <laughs> On next week's show, we'll be asking Sally Gunnell to point at some windmills and going behind the scenes of a new soap opera set behind the scenes of a soap opera. And that's it for now. Until next time, we've been Scorch. Goodbye. <laughs>
That's right, Martin. Now, let's look at some things that start with the letter B. Bicycle. Balloon. Bumblebee. Hmm, looks like our bumblebee is thinking. I wonder what's on his mind. That's me. So it is. He was thinking about you, Martin. But what's happening? Well, well, he's imagining a power drill going in and out of your head. Can we make the bee go away? Why, Martin, Mr. Bumblebee's only just arrived. We should watch his dream a little longer. Would you like that? No. Sure you would. Would not. Well, that's too bad, Martin, because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to stand here and watch Mr. Bumblebee's dream. And at the end of the dream, I want you to say, Thank you, Mr. Bumblebee, and smile. Do you understand, Martin? Do you understand, Martin? Yes, yes. Good. Then let's watch together. <laughs> oh, that was very good, Mr. Bumblebee, and I believe Martin here has something to say, don't you, Martin? Thank you, Mr. Bumblebee. Mr. Bumblebee can't hear you, Martin. Thank you, Mr. Bumblebee. Very good. Oh, my me, is that the time? I've got to go now, Martin. I'll lock you in as usual. I'm sure you two will be just fine together. See you next month, Martin. See you then. <laughs> of the advertising community. Later tonight, at 8, Bruce Willis seeks the source of mysterious tumbling fun in Tetris the movie. And there's comedy at 11 in Topical Gag Fest, Rabble Mock Ha Ha Time. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, uh, it's in the news today that uh, some scientists have discovered that women have a better sense of smell than men. Uh, yeah, right, OK. Now, I'm just conducting an experiment to see if that's true. Now, right. can you smell this sour milk? <laughs> Fucking hell. Now, orchestrated heartbreak in Boom Goes Lover Girl. Hi, I'm Crud Dunker, and you're watching Boom Goes Lover Girl. Here, the aim is simple to get a lonely guy to tell one of our undercover actresses that he's fallen in love with her. The minute he utters those three little words, we reveal that she's a stooge, and he's fallen in love with nothing but a pack of lies. So, Stephen is 27 years old and he has never had a long-term relationship? I'm sure he must still be a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's very shy, he's quite ugly, and he isn't in any way interesting or appealing. I mean, I don't know why any girl would want him. <laughs> well, we thought it was about time Stephen met a nice girl. A girl like Sandra. Sandy? Hi. My name's Mitzi Strap, and I'm about to be Sandra, the girl who falls in love with Stephen. August 10, and while browsing for video games, Stephen is approached by a mystery girl, our Sandra. Asking for advice on which game to buy, she asks for his phone number. Two days later, we make the call. Hello? Oh, hi. Is that Stephen? Uh, yeah. Stephen, hi, this is Sandra. I'm the girl you met the other day in the game shop. Do you remember me? Uh, well, yeah, of course. Uh, I explained how pixels work. Yeah. Well, I, I was just wondering if you fancied going for a coffee or, or something. Um, well, yeah, yeah, when? Several weeks and many meetings and phone calls later, and Stephen's clearly taken with Sandra. He's really smitten. The things he says about her, the way his eyes sparkle. I mean, I know my son, and I can tell he's falling in love. It's now October 10th, two months since Stephen first met Sandra. Right now, they're here in this very park, and for Stephen, it's a very special day. Yesterday, he told his mom he planned to tell Sandra exactly how he feels. Okay, team, the moment you hear the word love come out of his mouth, we go in, not before. Ready? Okay. 
Sandra, I... What? Well, you know we've been hanging around each other. Yeah. Uh, I feel... No, I've got feelings. You've got feelings? Yeah. Feelings for me? Uh... Well, what sort of feelings? Come on, Stephen, you can tell me. Oh. What sort of feelings? It's nothing. I feel silly now. No. Shit. I thought we had him. I really thought... OK, OK, they're talking again. This could be the big one. You can trust me. <sighs> Stephen, I might have the same feelings myself. Uh, I... Yeah? Uh, I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> we got it! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! go. <laughs> <laughs> You've had your heart broken oh, on yeah. Boom Goes Lover Girl. <laughs> so, you just told this girl you loved her, oh, right? Oh, he did. <laughs> well, let me tell you, Stephen, oh. she's an actress. Oh, yeah, hell. absolutely. We got the whole thing on tape. She's a stooge. Everything she told you was a lie. You oh. might have just as well fallen in love with a puppet, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> this girl actually hates you. It's true. Loser, loser. <laughs> Oh, come on, Steve. Smile for the camera, Stephen. You're a star. Oh, we another time, won't there? Oh, we'll oh, be crushed by this. Utterly crushed. Oh, it was great fun. You know, when I saw the way he was fighting back real tears today, and he really did not have a clue that I thought he was an O-one. That's when I knew it was all worth it. I think Boom Goes Lover Girl will kill him. A distraction with Pleb Dazzle Party. with Now Biter. Hello, on tonight's Now Biter, we'll be getting high with the Sunderland Art Collective, whose latest installation can only be viewed by climbing a 90-foot ladder of swords, and asking, why all the fuss over new kids drama, Clawhammer Justice? But first, this. Shooting Blood is the latest novel from Scottish author Ewan Reith. Like his previous works, Canny Prolapse and Dick Ake, it charts the exploits of five Glasgow school friends, getting their kicks from drugs, violence and blank eyed defecation in tower block stairwells. Here, reading from the new book, is Danny Slouch, currently starring in Reed's West End adaptation, Got Up a Bum Box. I was wiping dog poo off the baby's face when I heard them. I'll fucking kill you, he screams at Shitehead, who's fucking crippled Mary by the fag machine. And then he takes out his staple gun and sets to fucking work on Shithead's face. Fuck you, he screams as he staples Shithead's eyelids open. And he strikes a match across his eye. 
Then lighting his ciggy fat fuck fires a long hot piss on shithead's eyeballs. Then suddenly the scag kicks in and I start puking. And the puke stinks so bad up my nose that I starts puking on the puke. And the stink gets so bad I start shitting in my pants and the shit stinks so bad I start puking in my trousers. And the puke and the shit stinks so bad that shithead starts puking on fat fuck. And fat fuck starts reeling and puking on shithead. And the puke hinks his eyes and starts fizzing. And he starts shitting in his pants while he's puking on his chest and the floor is just covered in shit and piss and puke and blood. And the stink is so bad that everyone's puking. Everyone except sick fuck. He's lying on the bar fiddling with my dog's dick while the dog's puking on his head and shitting out of his dirty black dog's bum. Asterix Square to you. The Telegraph complained that Reed's Scottish dialect and relentless use of Glasgow slang is utterly impenetrable. Fair point? Well, it's the absolute impenetrability that, that forces us to question uh, its meaning. Reith's inability to engage with um, story, um, character and plot is, is perhaps his greatest device. So there was Jason for a slot of Shaz Bay. Exactly. What does that mean? No idea. Chloe Shoehorn, a woman like Reith. Well, without wanting to generalise, I would say absolutely none of them do. Um, all his female characters are so unsympathetic. What about uh, the girl who pees herself to death? Oh, that just felt so 1996. Well, that's what the panel think. But what about normal people? Len, you're a farm man from Gloucester. Were you able to read this book? Well, sort of, but I, I, I thought it was meant to. I, I couldn't really make head nor tail of it. It's all F this and F that, you know. And, and as for that bit where the bloke puts marmot on his dick. Do you think Reith glamorises the working class? Well, I, I think he makes it up. You remember that bit where, 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 where there's that Scottish book, McBum or something, you know, and he puts his baby in the road so he can go to the loo in a pram? I mean, broad daylight, firing crap into a pram, he is. A powerful scene. Yeah, he's mental, mate. Powerful. In mental. Powerful. Mental. Powerful. powerful. Chloe. <laughs> M mentorful. That's all for tonight, but join us next week as we cast a critical eye toward Poland, where hanging is now a team sport, and scrutinise nine hats. Till then, good night. <laughs>